morning and welcome to my channel. I'm Mr. Tie-Dye and today I'm going to be doing uh, some more letters as you could see from the beginning of the video. I'll do one long video with all of the letters in it but it'll be broke up into shorter pieces so that you guys can pick which letters you want to find. Anyways, uh, what I'm starting with is a piece of fabric that it was just an odd one when I was cutting tapestries years ago. I had this one long piece of fabric left, so I thought it was perfect for this. Uh, it's a nice cotton. It's not hemmed on the edges. Uh, it's been pre-washed, but I have not soaked it in soda ash. My plan at the end is to do an ice dye on this once I get everything tied up. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. We're going to start with the W. I'll get the video camera zoomed in a little better, but I wanted you to at least see the start of the project, so let's get into it. Okay, like I said, I'm going to start with the W first. Um, I just did some lines. I kind of measured, centered things out just to get my lines drawn on here. That's stuff that you guys have to figure out on your own. I just drew a center line both ways, do some channels, and then I started drawing letters in here. <clears throat> One of the things, uh, sometimes I didn't get my lines drawn correctly. Once I drew it, I seen that it was just too wide. So for myself, I like to cover up those mistakes with a different color, just so that when it comes time to dye in it, I'm not mistaken which one of these two spots that I want to put my colors on. So that's how I cover up my mistakes. There was, I think, one other, anyways. So for the W, there's two ways that you can do the W. You can either get each one of the lines. I do these as a raised pleat. So you can fold up each one of these lines, fold them together, or since the W is fairly symmetrical, you can fold it in half. So if you're doing it on to a t-shirt, folding it in half might be the, the easiest way. And then you have basically just half of uh, the W there, which looks kind of like a wonky V. So then from there, what I do is I still do the raised pleat. So I make sure that I have all of my layers. So you want to make sure that you're picking up both the front and the back here when you raise that up. And one thing you can do, I have these folder clips, and that sometimes will just kind of hold some of these folds in place while I get everything raised up where I want it. The W is not so hard just because it is straight lines, but when you get into some of these others, it might make things easier if you use these folder clips. So, but like I say, this the W is fairly easy. What I'm going to do is line things up and when I do the raised pleat I want to make sure that the only thing that is raised up is just the letters so that's one thing that you want to really make sure of because that's where your shape is going to come in so I make sure that everything else is tucked down underneath and then I just line these letters up and like I say each one of the letters is going to be done in a similar type fashion just each one has its own little tricks to it. So this is just how I do this one here. I get those lined up and I make sure that everything else is pulled down. And then at these ends, this here is the bottom of the W and the top, I just make sure to just kind of fold that over. So when I'm in, in my raised pleat and I'm going to tie this off, this part here is folded down out of the way, right at the bottom of the W. So, and I'll do that up here also. But once I get to this point, then I can start doing the raised pleat. So I'm just kind of holding this in my hand and just doing a pleat in a different fashion. So I'm just folding that back and it's continuing to line up I can see all my nice colors up here on top where I drew my lines. So now we're going to do that. And then like I say, this here is another part. So I'll fold that down inside. But making sure that I keep the part with the letter on it up on top. And then there's one last part here. I'll pleat this over. And then I'm at the end, so I'm going to fold that part down. 
because basically this this top about half inch maybe not quite a half inch but that's where I'm going to tie my line and there's two different ways that you can do it you can use kite string or sinew since I'm doing an ice die on mine I'm going to do sinew but in the past I've also used kite string where I'll just tie that and then you can dye the tops of this here one color I usually will dye that in a dark color and dye the bottom part in a lighter color where you can kind of squirt it in there so if you do black up here it's easy to squirt more color in here and not worry that it's going to take over your line so that's what I'll do for my ice dye I'm going to dye all of the tops of the letters in black and then the rest of the whole tapestry will be in rainbow colors so what I'm going to do is tie this with sinew to try to create a little bit of a white line and a textured, you know, a, a thicker letter here. So when you have that all pinched together, you can kind of let that go. And you can either just wrap this and get your wrap started. But one of the things with sinew that's nice sometimes on some of these folds is if you tie a slip knot in there. And then that just allows you to slide that right over where you want it. Once again, I'm making sure that the edges of my pleats here at the bottom and the tops of the letters are folded down. Because if you fold this, if this here is folded into it, then you're going to have an extended part on your letter that doesn't belong there. Okay. So I'm putting that over. Like I say, that's not quite a half inch on there and then I'm just gonna tighten that up once I get that fairly tight on there then I'm gonna wrap that around and I usually will take this tail and just kind of tuck it under so I can wrap right on top of that I usually will do a few wraps on there and then I hold with one hand it slipped some so and that's the other nice thing about the slip knot if it slips on you it doesn't come all the way off if you just wrapped it under and tuck the tail then sometimes you have to re-pull that but I like to cinch that down until I can kind of feel a, the sinew lock in place and once I get that done like I say, I like to wrap a couple extras on there just to make sure I get a nice white line. Lock that in. And cut that off. And then I always, when I cut my sinew off, I like to just, I usually will put my finger in there, do a couple wraps, and that gives me a nice big knot on the end. It just makes easier uh, unwrapping later on. Otherwise, sometimes this end can fray and then it can tangle with the other ones. You tie a knot in it and I know exactly where to unwrap it. Okay, so there's my first letter. So from there, what I like to do to make sure I get my tapestry back out flat again because I do have an E that's next to it and I have a D that's below it. So that's the other thing when you're putting your letters on. You want to make sure that you have a couple inches of space between your letters so that you have enough room to do all of your folding and I'm going to go across the top first and then across the bottom I think anyways uh, that's the the W there so I'm going to end that part for now until I get these all tied and then I'm going to do my ice die so you just stay tuned and we'll be right back so I've already done the W and what I recommend is going back and watching the W video because I'm going to give you more details in that. The rest of the letters I'm going to show you how to do it but I'm not going to talk and explain because I don't want to explain the same exact thing 11 times in a row. So the rest of the letters I'm going to work through them quicker and I just ask that you refer back to the W for any more details on the actual folding and tying. But we're just gonna jump right in and start tying this E up. And for this one, I will use these clips just to hold these pleats in place while I gather the rest of the things up.
Okay, so what I'm doing here, I guess I will do some explaining because each letter is going to have its little tricks and turns in it. So I did the three parallel lines to start with on the E, and now the, the side lines, the ones that run uh, vertically, I'm going to fold those in. I don't know if this is how I've done it in the past, but... So basically I folded those up and I did my little corner fold in here. So it's a little 45 degree angle in there so I can lay those two right next to each other. And since I have that ready to go, I'm going to add that into my clip here. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm making sure that the rest of the fabric is poked down. I want just the letter part that I drew on sticking up. So once I get that done, then I can fold that one down and lay these two right next to each other on this E. And that holds those in place. These folder clips, they really do help with your letters. There's lots of different things that they help with, but with letters it really helps to keep those raised pleats in place. And this is something that it just, it just takes practice of working with the fabric and just getting everything to line up nicely. So you just have to just sit down and just work with it and that's what I'm going to do in the subsequent videos is just work with each one of the letters. I haven't actually done all of the letters of the alphabet. There's only been a few of them that I've tied over the years, but the process is the same. So most of these letters will be in first time for me tying them also. So I'm doing the same thing. This other part of the line, the horizontal line, I am laying it right next to the vertical line. I'm laying it next to the horizontal lines. So I'm just going to add it right into this clip here. And then I'm going to get this last one done. Okay, now I think I got all of my lines pulled up where I need them. So now it's a matter of doing a big pleat, but the center line in my E is shorter than the top and the bottom lines. So I'm going to, right at the end of this line here, I'm going to fold this down like a 90 degree angle. Once again, I'm making sure that the only things that are on the upward side are just the lines that I drew on here. Everything else gets folded down like this so that it's not within the line that I'm going to tie with the sinew. Okay. So now for this, since I already have several pleats lined up on this here, I'm just going to fold over right at the edge of that on my E. Fold these two lines in, and this here is the end of those runs. So I could just put my thumb on that and fold these down at a 90 degree angle. That's at the end of my horizontal lines, top and bottom on the E folding the excess fabric down and then I'm going to fold this over in half just like that and once again all of these other lines are non lines they get folded down so that just the line is within the pleat there so you can see how I folded this edge down so when I tie my sinew on there, it's getting tied right there. So 
only this little bit is being included, but that's going to be the thickness of the letter. Okay, once I have that done, I can usually let go of that. Since the fabric is damp, it usually will hold its space a little bit, but this one is not cooperating much. So we'll just work quickly. I'm going to tie a slip knot. That would be something if you tie your pre-tie your slip knot, then it's easier because you can just slide that right over top when you're done. Yeah, mine come unfolded a little bit, but not too bad. Okay. And I'm going to try to make all of these about the same thickness here. You can try to be as precise as you want with this, or I've seen other people that they, they're doing this same type of process, maybe not exactly the same, but their letters are a little funkier. You can draw nice precise letters, or you could draw funky letters. You can do it however you like. The main thing is getting this to come out the way that you want it to come out. And if it doesn't come out the right way the first time, somebody will still love it. Just learn from it and make another one. I know it's not as easy to do. I don't mean that everybody has unlimited fabric. But you know the gist of what I'm getting at. you got to let go of some of the perfectionists because this is tie-dye. And just have fun with it. Okay. I think I'm about done with the E. We'll get that clipped and tied. Okay. There's my E. Now you can see that it bunches the fabric up. Each one of the letters is just going to bunch the fabric up even more here as you go. I just try to make sure that I have as much of this fabric pulled out as possible. And let's see. I might go ahead and do these bottom two later letters and then move on to the next. So stay tuned. Upon clicking through these different letters, uh, we're up to D right now. So what I'm going to do for this one is fold up this back line, the straight one, first. And put a couple clips on it just to hold that in place. And then we have just top and bottom, we're going to have this weird little angle where the, the line comes out. So basically what I'm going to do is pull this other line up as much as I can. And I'll put some clips on it to hold it in place to make it easier when I get around to that point. It's just easier if you have some of these lines already clipped and raised up. So you don't have to try to raise them while you're doing your pleating also. Because the raised pleat is everything is just working right in your hands. Okay, so there's my D for now. And then I just, once I have that pulled up, what I'm going to do is take these two parts of the D where we have the, <laughs> we have the bottom of the letter here that, that runs the straight line and then the curved line. So at that point, I'm going to get both of those raised pleats up and then I'm going to fold them at a 45 degree angle to lay them next to each other here. Once I have that, I can pull one of these clips off because this curved line is longer than the straight line is. So as I go along here, I'm going to fold bits of this curved line in on itself just to take up some of that space or maybe fold it out on itself. However you can get the, the fabric to lay down, 
this here is what going to be one of the trickier ones of accomplishing that. So I'm just going to kind of work both of these. Right now I'm working on the curved line and I'm just folding some of that excess fabric up and making sure that the rest of the fabric around it is still going down. But some of these letters they'll be funkier than others and that's okay. Or at least in my book you guys can try to be as precise as you want but I encourage you to have more fun with it than preciseness. Okay. So as I work my way around here I just keep pulling those clips off and I just keep folding. I usually have more folds on this outer one. Not usually, just because that's the way it is. The line is longer, it needs more folds. Uh, and also since this here is the bottom of the fold, I'm going to just fold that down out of my way right now so that I can hold the rest of this in my hand. When you work with curved lines, you just have to keep kind of manipulating the fabric. I just keep kind of rolling it back and forth to get just the line up on top. But as you go around the curve, it changes. So you just have to keep working it. And just keep pulling your clips off. And like I say, I like to get up to the point where these two lines can fold up and lay right next to each other. But also you have to make sure that inside you keep the fabric tucked down also. So this one does take some some practice to get it down, but then after that it's just it's just time consuming. You just have to keep playing and working with the fabric to get your letter folded in there. And if I can do it with my big fingers here, you guys can do it too. Well, I encourage you to try. <laughs> I think anybody, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. Okay, so now I think I have all of the bits of the D folded in there, all of the tops and bottoms folded down, and once again, I didn't prep my sinew line ahead of time. So this one, let's see, I think I got a rubber band around here. Oh yeah, that's the other thing, you can use a rubber band to help hold your things in place also. So I'm just going to loosely wrap this with a rubber band just so it doesn't come undone. You don't want to have to refold something. So that holds that in place. So it's good to have your your slip knot prepped ahead of time. And then I can even slide that over top. Hold that a little bit in place as I pull this rubber band off. And then just adjust my sinew to the height that I want it. Once again, I'm going with just a little bit less than a half an inch of fabric there, but you can do yours however big or small you want to. But the one thing, if you go too small, you might, when you tighten it, you might end up pulling some of the fabric out. So you do have to have enough for the sinew to grab onto.
Okay. So this is a perfect time to prep the slip knot for the next letter. That's ready for the next one. This one I'll tie my knot in and we're done. Okay, once again, there's another letter in the tapestry. So, we're going to move on to the next one. Okay, now we're up to the O. And I know I already have an O in my video, in my list already. That one, I did a bigger O, I folded it in half, and I just folded it around. This time, since I'm doing the rest of my letters with the sinew, I'm going to try doing the O in the same fashion. So it's going to be a matter of, like I did with the D, raising it up. But this time, it's all curved lines. So I'm going to kind of get top and bottom and the sides raised up and then I'm just going to start working. Okay, now that I have that, all the sides raised up, now I can kind of start lining them up. And since it is symmetrical, I'm going to try to lay them on top of each other as I go here. So it's just a matter of working your way around the circle and just lining your lines up. I'm a little bit off on mine, that's fine. I don't mind with the letters being a little bit misshapen. But that's just what you have to do. Just keep working and just keep tucking. So when I'm looking on the inside of the fabric here, I want to make sure that I don't pull the center part of the O up and get it folded into my pleats. I want to make sure that that's all tucked down inside so that I have just the line that I'm bringing up here. Now I'm just going to fold over, do a big pleat that way. And you can't get all of the fabric out of the way all at once. It's something that I'm just doing as I do my pleats and gathering here together. I am just then tucking this inner part in and tucking these outer parts down as I go. You, there's, I don't want to say there's no way, but I just don't see a way to raise everything up and just fold it all at one time. I am just working as I go. And that way I can try to keep everything on the same level as closely as possible and just making sure that the bottom parts are folded down out of the way. So we'll take that off. And and then here is the top of my O. Okay, and we'll fold that over. And then it's just a matter with these letters with the curved lines on them, you just have to kind of keep working till you get everything lined up just where you want it. 
and then I can kind of fold that over just a little bit just to pinch it tight and I pre-prepped my slip knot on my sinew so I can just wrap that right over top and tighten this up and hold that in place. Alrighty. And a knot at the end, it just helps with finding the edges that you need to pull to unwrap things. Okay. So there's my W, my E, my D, and my O. So that says we do. So now we're going to move over to our C. Oh, let's... This one here is going to be on the C. So, and this one here... I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of gather bits and pieces of these up. If you watch some of my previous videos, you might get some extra tips and tricks because each letter has its own little thing and I just kind of talk in my rambling fashion. I know some people don't care for it, but there's lots of different tie-dye channels. So if you don't like my style, my rambling, then over on my channels list, if you just click on that tab, you'll find like 25 other tie-dye channels that I have listed there. And I'm sure you'll find somebody that whose style will match with yours. So anyways, looking back through previous videos, you might pick up some extra tips and tricks, even if it's not a letter that you want to do. So I encourage you to check out the other videos, especially the one in this series here. Okay, so once I get that pulled up, really I just like to have as much of the, the letter pulled up as possible. It's, I just find that it makes the pleating, the raised pleating, a little bit easier. Especially since this one here, we're just there's no closed line, it's just a curve all the way around. So I'm just going to do kind of a, what I call a zigzag raised pleat here. I'm going to have a little bit of a space and I'm pushing the middle in and just folding these back on themselves. But it does take some manipulating the fabric because you're going around a corner here. So you do have to just keep working with it. But once you get that done, I have one finger up here, one down here, and I'm just poking with my two in the middle and just folding that over. And then this here is the bottom part of my C at the end. So since the pink line ends right there, I'm going to just fold that down at a 90 degree corner to get that out of my way. And then I'm going to continue to work my way around the rest of the pleat here. Just continuing to straighten that letter out as much as I can and folding that pleat in and then I'm just going back and forth just kind of a zigzag gathering that up and once again I'm making sure that all the rest of the fabric is getting tucked down out of the pleat range or the tying range which is going to be just shy of a half inch there. Okay, and this is the last bit of my C. And the fabric, it, it's helpful when you're doing the manipulation. You just sometimes have to put extra little creases in here just to get the fabric rolled around where you want it at. 
So there's the end of it. So I'm going to fold that over. And then this here is the end. So that's getting folded down. And this other one came up a little bit. So I'm going to fold that one back down also. That's the end of my C there. And now this here, I'm going to just, because it makes it easier for tying, I'm just going to fold that over a little bit. Making sure that <clears throat> all of my pleats stay up here at the top level here. Okay, we're slowly working our way through. Stay tuned. Up to the A now. So I'm just going to turn that sideways here. And I'm just folding my two big lines up to start with. And just putting some clips on them to hold those in place. Okay, now I can kind of pinch this middle together here and lay those right next to each other. You roll the fabric just a little bit between your fingers. And get that lined up. Then I can hold that in place. And this bottom part of the A. And now I want to get this middle line going on here. So. What I do is create these little pleats where I line this up and lay that fabric down. So basically I'm going to take this middle part that's going across and I'm going to, well maybe I'll, I'll tuck it up since I already have this V shape going up this other way or inverted V. So it's just a matter of getting all of your points lined up. And by points, I'm just talking about the corners of the fabric here, where the letters touch the other sides. So I have this little triangle. So now this center part that goes across, I'm going to tuck it up and fold these two corners down. And this here is a little tricky, may take some practice because you have so many different lines that you're trying to bring together here, but I have faith in you, you can do it. Just keep playing with the fabric. Okay. That's the middle part of the A, tucked up here in the middle. And then these are the two lines going down the sides there. So I'm going to take all these clips off now. Okay, now I'm going to do my little zigzag fold again. Just kind of folding those down on each other. And I'm just kind of going right up to the top of the A there. And then that way I can fold this other part back over on itself. And then I'm going to fold this part. This is the top. And this here is the end of my pleat. So I'm going to fold this down right there. That's just a nice spot for it. Okay, now this is the bottom part of the A. So I'm just trying to line my two sides up here. And then we'll just keep folding that back and forth. I try not to keep wrapping it up. I know in the past I think I did one where I kind of wrapped it around itself. 
but I find that sometimes you lose definition in those inner folds. So I've been trying to do more of a pleat back and forth on this. Sometimes you can't help it, you just need to wrap it up. But if you can do more of a zigzag, then that just helps, I think, those letters form up nicer. Okay, and then this here is the bottom of my letters, so I'm going to fold both of those down. And then I think, yeah, I get that down. I'm ready for my sinew. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, we're up to the end. So just in case you haven't been following along with the rest of the videos, uh, I am doing 11 different letters in this. Uh, the previous letters may have some details of me talking about how I folded or tied it that is not in every single video because each letter is a little different. So. Even if you're not wanting to do a W or an E or something, I still recommend you go back and listen to those videos because it might give you some more clues on, or tips and tricks on how to fold something. So right now we're going to do the N. And since this here is three straight lines, I'm going to raise these pleats up. And then I'm going to just fold them on the top of each other. And then I'm going to do the zigzag raised pleat on that. And I'm going to go on these pink lines. This other green line, purple line in here, is where I made my first line and I didn't quite get enough of an angle in there. But the one way to make sure that you don't confuse that when you're doing all your folding is if you draw a different color over top of it. Then you know that you can ignore that line and just fold the pink lines. So let's get into the pink lines here. So raise that up. And like I say, these clips just come in handy for holding things together. And the other thing, if I didn't leave quite enough room, I got these two letters just a little bit close here. So that's just something that'll come with practice if you do a lot of letters. The more you do it, you're going to really kind of find your spacing for how far letters need to be spaced out. But that's just a practice thing. Okay, so once I get my little points in there, then I can take these clips off and lay those two lines together. And then I put that clip back on to hold those two while I get this other point lined up. So basically what I'm doing is just working with these points here, the two points, and I'm just folding that crease in so I can lay them together right next to each other here. So now I'm going to do that same thing on this top one here. Just making sure that I raise the lines up, but I tuck the rest of the fabric down inside. That's what's going to give us the shape of the letter. If you have all of the fabric up then it's not going to give you the full shape because it's going to be distorted. Okay, I think that's enough on that side. So now I can take this clip off and hopefully just be able to pinch all three of these lines right together. while at the same time tucking the rest of the fabric down inside. And that's something that will become more apparent when you actually start working on one on a letter. You'll know what I'm talking about, about tucking the rest of the fabric down inside. It's hard to explain that, and I don't know if you can fully see that or not when I'm folding this, but 
and this one here the lines don't want to lay nice and flat so I just put just a little bit of a fold in that center line there I think because it's on a diagonal it's a little bit longer so it's not going to fully line up with these other two straight lines that just go uh, vertically but once I get that folded in I'm going to put a clip on this side to hold those in place while I get this bottom part it's being a little bit finicky on me and it's just a matter of lining those pleats up okay now let's fold a little bit more of that center line fabric So I'm just doing another little zigzag pleat there in the middle on that center line, the one that's coming down diagonally. And you guys might find your own workaround for that, but that's how I'm doing it. Okay, I think I'm ready to pleat that now. This here is the end, so those ones I'm going to fold down and then the rest of them I'm folding across here in this zigzag fashion where I kind of poke one side over just important to make sure you keep all your lines up on top though you don't want those to get tucked down inside because once again that will distort the shape of your letter Okay, I think I'm about done with the in here, so we're going to fold those down, and then this here is the top part. We're going to wrap that around a little bit and fold the end down. Okay. I have that. Once again, I prep my sinew at the end of the last letter, so I can just slide this slip knot over top and tighten it up Four more letters to go, so stay tuned. This last part is going to be more difficult because it's been scrunched up. So let's start this. The T will be our first letter, or the letter I'm working on right now. So let's just jump right into the T. I'm folding top part up to start with get that raised pleat up and put clips on both sides once again you don't have to use clips I just find it helps hold things in place while you get it lined up the way you want it so now I'm lining up this <coughs> vertical line and I'm coming right up to the point here where I have the, the line, this vertical line meets the horizontal line. So I have these two angles here. So those I'm going to fold over and lay the top parts of the T down along the side parts of the T here. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll take one side off first and lo lay those right next to each other. It's just a matter of tucking this inner part in and down and then at the end of the the top line on the T I'm gonna fold that over right there and now this other one I'm gonna pull it off and I'm gonna kinda of line things up first so that I don't have to adjust it as much So 
Okay, and now that part of the T, the end of the line here where the pink line ends, I am folding that edge down and in. And then we'll just fold this over. And then we're just going to zigzag back and forth on this T till we get to the bottom. Once again, I made sure that these two edges are folded over and down at the ends of the T. So the only thing I have left now is just this line that's the uh, vertical line going up the center of the T here. So I'm just going to fold that over and then back again. And then same thing over and back again and this time I'm bringing right to the edge here at the bottom and then I can fold this part down right there and then it's just a matter of lining all of my T's my lines up at the same level here on the top again And then just fold those over in half a little bit and slip my sinew knot over that. Adjust it to the height you want and then tighten and tighten. Okay, we're on to the H. Some of the other videos, like the W, the E, those ones uh, probably have more details talking in them. Well, they all have some talking of some sort, but each letter is going to have its own challenges. So it's just a matter of picking up all those tips and tricks. So for the H, I'm going to take the two vertical lines and stand those up use my clips to hold them in place and then it's a matter of getting this center line folded up I'm moving these ones down just a little bit so I have more room to work with because the center line then is going to have four different corners on it, two on each side that I'm going to line up here. So as I raise these up then I can get this first line tucked in there and I'll just put a different clip on it for now until I get this other one lined up. So I'm doing the same thing. This here is the cross line and the bottom part of the H. <clears throat> Get those lined up. And I'm going to start taking some of these other clips off. And sometimes you just have to kind of fold it up however it comes out there. So that's what I did there. I just kind of laid them next to each other in whatever fashion I could. And you can slowly remove clips, join these parts together so that you can move on and keep getting the rest of the parts of the H folded in. You can try doing the different parts individually, but I just, myself, I've had better luck when I've just lined everything up together. And the H just is a little trickier because of the cross line there and the number of angles you have to fold. But just take your time and you can do this. <laughs> just a deeper joke there. And I'll just line up 
the ends here so that they're all just lined up at the bottom there and then do the same thing up here at the top you just gotta fold that center line down some and then this is the last bit of the upper lines here so I got those folded together and I'm gonna fold that over And then just make sure that each of these top and bottom lines that you do the 90 degree corner folding them down so that they don't get caught up in your sinew line. I think I have all of them up there. All right, we're getting closer. This here is drying out a little bit, so I might have to spritz it with just a little bit of water just to make it easier to work with, but we might be able to finish it up. Anyways, stay tuned. All right, time to start with the eye. And this here is getting more and more convoluted trying to see that, I apologize, but you guys seen at the beginning all of the letters that I'm doing, so I'm up to the I in this right now. And the I is going to be similar to the H. Uh, the H had two tall lines and a short line going across. This one here has two short lines this way and a tall line. Uh, but probably what I'm going to do is fold the tops and the bottoms of the I down along the center, kind of like I did with the T here. So... Sometimes it's just a matter of looking at it and seeing which way you think will work the best. I'm going to put a clip on to hold the bottom part of the eye in place. Now I'm going to work on the vertical line. Like I say, each one of the letters I'm doing in a similar type fashion, but each one of them being its own shape has a little bit of its own idiosyncrasies. So you just have to figure out what works best for each letter. Like I say, I haven't done all of the letters. I've done maybe, in all of the years, I've probably tied maybe a half a dozen letters but most of them were done in a different fashion than this. Anyway. Okay, so now I'm going to fold the other part, the bottom of the eye, up. So those are the two sides of the eye along the bottom of the letter and then the center of the eye coming up. I think I just got my center line rolled just a little bit. There it is. You can see that line now. So I'm going to hold this in place with the clip while I work on the top part of it. So these will, letters will be much easier if you're just doing one letter on something, but if you're doing words then it, it will be a process like this where you have to line everything up ahead of time, get all your lines drawn on there, and then just slowly work one by one. And I can see where I probably should have done just a little bit more spacing between my letters just because some of these are getting more difficult to fold in there. But since I have my lines drawn on here, I can see where I need to fold that. It just makes it more difficult for you guys to see. But once you sit down and start folding some letters, you're going to kind of get a feel for it. And then you can come back and watch this one of these videos or all of the videos and pick up all the little tips and tricks for each one of the letters. Mostly, I'm doing this to show you it can be done and to show you how I do it. There's probably other methods 
that maybe other artists have figured out and done, but when I do letters, I either, I've done them as a stitched job, or I've done them folded, and if I'm doing the raised pleats on some of the odd-shaped ones, but like the O is one that you can just fold it in half on the T and just fold around with a regular pleat, but not all the letters can be done that way. Some of them have to be done this way or stitched. So it's just a matter of figuring out what's going to work best for you. And I try to bring as much as I can to the table to help everybody figure out what works best for them. Once again, I'm making sure that my two sides of the eye are folded down at a 90 degree corner. You don't want any of them up in this top half inch. Otherwise, it's going to misshape the letter. And now I'm just going to zigzag fold this back and forth here. I just find that that sometimes is the easiest way. And just continuing to make sure that I push all this other excess fabric down so it doesn't get caught up in this top part where I'm going to be tying the letter off at. All right, we'll take this other clip off and just make sure that you don't lose the top part of the eye there. I got these other two pleats folded down, so it does take a little bit of holding on to everything as you go, but you can just keep folding and working the best that you can. If something comes out, I know it's a pain, but sometimes it's better if you just start over if something doesn't fold in there correctly. But once you get them all folded in there just where you want them, and get the levels so that everything is at the right height, and all the other bits are folded down, then like I say, this is a good time to have an already tied slip knot that you can just slide right over. But also remember, if you need to, you can take a rubber band and just quickly do a couple wraps around that to hold that in place. But also, you can tie these with kite string. If you wanted to just go along and tie all these with kite string in the same fashion here, then you could do a different kind of dye job on there. You could still probably do an ice dye, but I'm specifically wanting to try to get white lines around my letters and I'm just going to do this in a random rainbow design. So I'll probably dye all of the letters. In, well, I'm not going to stay. I think about doing them in black and then rainbow for the rest, but who knows? I might change my mind when it comes time to put the colors on. Almost done. One more letter to go and then we'll be ready to scrunch the rest of this up and then get some dye put on it. So stay tuned. Okay, welcome to the last letter in this video series that I'm doing here. I saved the S for last. <laughs> Sorry, I crack myself up sometimes. Okay, the S is one of the more difficult ones that I see, just from the way that it's just a constant curve going one way and then back the other direction. The curved lines are more difficult just getting the pleat raised up the way that you want it. Uh, and this one here, I'm not going to try to put the clips on because it's going to change. Each time I do another little bit of a pleat on the S, it's going to change so I'm just going to slowly gather it up so I'm just picking the bottom part you can pick the top that part I don't think really matters just pick your starting point and then we're just going to start lining it up and doing little zigzag folds probably a little bit bigger than that one but that just makes it difficult you have to kind of manipulate the fabric because it's not going to line up because you're not doing a straight fold so you can't just pick it up and hold it straight because the line is curved, so you have to adjust the fabric so that you get just the line on top. And then at that point, I will fold part of this over and also fold part of the S down 
and then I'm just going to work my way around this whole S just adding more to my pleats and like I say there's no secret technique to this it's just a matter of lining things up so I know it's not always the easiest to see especially with this wada fabric that I have going on here but really it's just a matter of folding it up however you can get it to line up and keeping the rest of the fabric tucked down so I just keep pinching and getting this line up on top and then doing just little zigzag raised pleats on there All right, this time I am going to wrap it around just a little bit just to kind of hold that bottom part in place as I switch directions because it's going to now curve back around the other way. So, getting close there. And once again, I ran into this spot where I tied this letter a little bit too close to this one. So I'm working with limited fabric, which is, of course, what makes it more difficult to see everything here. So just remember to space your fabric out. But once again, it's just the, the same technique of just raising that up. But with the S, since it's all curves, you just have to keep pulling the little bits out and folding it up where you can. Well, we're getting close to the end here, but this little last bit where the fabric is all bunched up is what is making it a little bit more difficult, but I think I can still do this, so we're just going to keep going for it. The S is just one of the most difficult, so maybe I should have started with the S. That's okay. We saved the S for last. And I think I'm almost done. This last little bit here, I can probably, the easiest way will be just to kind of wrap it around. So rather than try to zigzag pleat, I'm just kind of wrapping that last little bit around. And then this last little bit of tail, we're just going to tuck it back on itself. And pull the rest of the fabric down. Like I say, this one here is, I think, is going to be funkier than the rest of the letters. A little odd shape, but you should still be able to see it as an S once we get it dyed up here. And this is where it really comes in handy to have your slip knot pre-tied so you can just slip it on there and tighten it down. And once you get it tight, then we're good to go. Alrighty. And I usually just kind of wrap that tail, tuck it underneath, and just wrap on top of it. I like to have several layers of the sinew just to make sure that I get a nice white line on there. So I usually do three or four of the double or triple wraps and then I pull it tight. Okay, I think that should do. We're going to cut this and then we'll get it stretched up for dyeing. Okay, so there it is, and like I say, the other thing, if you're going to, uh, if you tied this up with kite string, and you were going to just dye just the tops of these letters, it's also important that you get them all gathered up, so when you do your scrunch, 
all of your letters are on top. So that's how I will do this just in case I wanted to put black on my letters before I do an ice dye on the rest of it. But for now, I need a little bit of break, get my hands a little rest, and then we're going to come back, scrunch this up, and then you'll see the whole process. Okay, like I say, I'm going to get this scrunched up here. And part of it, I'm just going to take all of these ties here that are hanging out loose, and I'm just going to kind of wrap them around in place, just so that they're a little bit contained and not floating around everywhere but it doesn't need to be done. I just find it easier for myself if they're a little bit wrapped up. Okay, then from there, I'm just going to scrunch these. So I'm just gonna gather them up, and once again, I'm just making sure that I keep all of the letters facing up so that if I wanna hit them with black, which I probably will, they're all ready at the top there and I can touch them up. Other than that, I'm just going to kind of scrunch this together. The best that I can. Like I say, the fabric has dried out so it's not as easy to scrunch it, but we're just going to do this. Since I want to ice dye it, I wanted it to dry out some anyways, so I decided I didn't want to spritz it with water. I will just manage with the scrunching the dry fabric. Okay, so there is the <clears throat> you can do this or we can do this with the 11 different letters. So I'm going to let this dry out just a little bit more and then I'm going to use my dyes that I've mixed with soda ash already because like I said, I didn't soak this in fabric in soda ash. It was just uh, damp with regular water. We're going to tie the, the get this uh, dyed up in ice dye. <laughs> Sorry. I'll be back. Hello and welcome back. I apologize for the long delay. Um, but we're back to put some dye on this uh, letters tapestry here. Uh, originally I had planned on doing an ice dye so I didn't soak it in soda ash. I just did a pre-wash and then tied it up. But since then I have decided that I want to go ahead, like I say, you can just ice dye this, you can dye these um, with different colors of ice uh, powder dye or you could use liquid dye. What I'm going to do just because I want to experiment is I'm going to use some thick black dye and I'm going to paint just the top creases of these and then I'm going to let it batch and then I'm going to do the ice dye. So, since this here doesn't have any soda ash on it, I'm going to go ahead and spray the tops of all these creases so that this black dye will actually bond with the cotton fibers. And then I'm going to ice dye it and we'll see how putting the liquid on and combine it with the ice dye works. So, anyways, I love experiments, so we're just going to, I have just my regular soda ash here and I'm just going to lightly spray just the tops of these creases here. And then this is just thick black dye that I've mixed up. You could probably use regular black dye too. Um, I just happen to have thick so that's what I'm using. And once again this is just an experiment. I just want to see how it comes out doing it this way. In the past I've usually just tied them up and dyed them with liquid dye. So anyway.
Okay, there it is for now. Like I say, I just colored the top creases there. Let's see if I can get that. Of all my letters, and then eventually I'm going to come back and tie dye uh, or ice dye the rest of this. But for now, I'm going to batch this for 48 hours, and we'll be back. Thank you. Okay, it's been about a little more than 48 hours, so I let the the thick black dye set up. And then I let it set out overnight where so it would dry, just because I didn't want the, the black dye rubbing off on my hands as I worked with this. So next thing I'm going to do is get it set up for ice dyeing. So I'm going to wrap it with tin foil around to build my barrier up to contain the ice in there. And then we'll get some powdered dye put on here. Uh, you don't have to use tin foil. Either people use cardboard, they use baseboard protectors. Uh, all kinds of different things you can use for this. My, I just happen to like tin foil, so that's what I'm going to use. So I got the the barrier built. The next thing I'm going to do is put on my powdered dyes. Uh, I have mixed them. I did one quarter cup soda ash and two teaspoons of powdered dye. And I put them in these containers and shook them up. And then I put spooned that into these containers. These are the sugar riders. So you push this here, you get a little bit of vibration and it just helps the, the dye kind of come out through this little spout here. So what I'm going to do is use fuchsia, deep orange, lemon yellow, emerald green, turquoise, and plum. All of them have been mixed in the same fashion. Like I say, one quarter soda ash, one quarter cup soda ash, two teaspoons of powdered dye. Uh, and then, like I say, I store them in an airtight container because you don't want any moisture to get in there. If you get moisture in there, then the, the dye and the soda ash can start reacting there. So what I'm going to do now is put on my face mask and apply my dye. I'm going to do just a rainbow going across here. So I'm just going to start with fuchsia on this side, work my way across to purple on here. So I got all my ice, my dye plate on there. I just, like I say, went in lines across there. Now I'm going to go get the ice and put a coat of ice on here. So stay tuned. Okay, we got the ice ready. So I'm just going to start putting this on. I try to put it on a little gingerly so that I don't knock the powder around too much. So to start with, I kind of do a little bit of placement of the ice. And then I just pour some more on top. And there's the ice dye. So now I'm going to let this melt. After it completely melts, I'll check the bottom. If I have dye coming through to the bottom, then I'm going to go ahead and batch it for 48 hours. Uh, if dye is not coming through to the bottom, then usually I'll add a little bit more powder dye, a little bit more ice, and let it melt through. So we'll check back. Thank you for watching. Good morning, and welcome to Hippie Christmas with Mr. Tie Dye. Thank you guys for your patience. This one has been a long time coming, but finally got it done. Um, I dyed, I ice dyed this. I checked the bottom. I had some color. I probably could have added a little bit more dye to this, but that at least gives some contrast in there. So we're just going to open this thing up, see what we got.
There's the I. And once again, there was the S. So let's back this up and open. Okay, so when I say peace on earth, you guys say, we can do this. <laughs>